Okay, I'm not really sure where to start. I have one probe. This is the L2 coil capacitor. And one probe is on that. And its ground is just open, but that's not going to matter because the other ground is attached to ground. That's this ground. Goes over to that bridge rectifier. That's the. This is the high voltage output. If I detach this, get orange neon lights. I get um, a really noisy signal. I can turn it down to there, though. And now I get a very sharp pull set. Um, I don't know, like. It says 12.2 kilohertz, 19.2 kilohertz, and I guess I can not really adjust that, because that's really just the feedback from the primaries getting voltage from the neons not taking the full charge, something like that. So, hold on. Okay, right now I have a capacitor on L1 in series with its driving coil and I'm getting um, something that looks like that at uh, um, five point two kilohertz and I should be able to tune that song. So the other one is really my resonant coil. That looks pretty good. Otherwise, it shifts. <coughs> Excuse me. And the uh, duty cycle can shift conversely to make it a different peak. But if I keep that kind of low and tighten that up. So I can tune this resistor, that's the uh, three-way low-ohm potentiometer, so I get kind of that. And that's... Um, Uh, about 521 kilohertz. Earlier it was more like three hundred. Now it's 600. And that's, um, that generates very large spikes. Ah, see that one. It's just on the verge of it turning off because it doesn't have enough voltage to charge. Um, See, that's between ground. Uh, it's not enough voltage to trigger the uh, CMOS chip. And that's more like 368 um, kilohertz. 373. There's a very, very narrow band. It's like just on the logic level of where the chip wants to turn on. And I get uh, this trumpet, well, decay. Decaying ring down. It's 
quite long. It's 10 microseconds. That's uh, 7.46 kilohertz. At that point, I'm drawing like no power. Um, I don't really have voltage. If I detach that coil, I will, but I can't get enough voltage over here. This is only. Uh, well that's 10 hertz, 50 volts. Plus or minus. 100 volts. And that's not quite enough to trigger that. It would be enough to trigger one of them, I guess. No. I guess other than I don't have the capacitance on it. But I thought that was interesting to run across this, um, Ringing. See, there's even a subwave on top of that. That's the high frequency one. All right. See, that's changing a pulse of edge somewhere. That's just barely turning the potentiometer in that ringing zone. Until I get back to the beginning, or negative. So that's interesting. And I said it's still a tunability of that larger waveform. But it's nothing like a sine wave at that point. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where my sine waves are, actually. I think maybe if I attach the other ground relative to itself, then I get a sine wave. Yeah. And I can kind of tune that for. I see neons are almost on. So changing the ground helps that. What's up? Kind of nice there. Okay, so we tune this to. There's blinking. And uh, that's not an optimal waveform there on the on the resonance.
But again, if I just disconnect that primary coil, then I get a nice big voltage. That's um. Negative 200, and the ends are, are lit solid. I should change grounds. So that's um something like eleven kilohertz. But then I get like complex forms where where it's got a ring down on it. And that ring down's like 568 hertz. This other one. It's like 250 hertz. Alright, so then I have this one that has a really high peak and a really complex wave ring down after it. They can kind of be stable. So, that ring down Is a bunch of half waves. Kind of strange. And that's 114, 62 kilohertz, 37 kilohertz, 36 kilohertz. So that's a whole bunch of complex ringing sound there. with an overall frequency of um, go first to first 5.32 kilohertz and that's using my old core because I can almost get voltage on that, on the LEDs. Uh, I guess that's all.